I bought this Tiny85 programmer on Amazon so I could program little Tiny85 microcontrollers with Arduino. I want to use it with the 8-pin module from Snap Circuits, but it's only pin numbers, no labels. So I'll show you how I made a two-color label that snaps on this thing. And if I use a different microcontroller, I can just pop it off and use a different label. It shows me exactly what each pin represents. And then once I build with it in Snap Circuits, I know what I'm connecting to. And what I'm ultimately trying to do is a simple little circuit to show a propeller taking off with a couple of LEDs. So you turn it on, red LED goes to green LED and launches the propeller. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. I use Tinkercad Circus to create the project, and I can write the code and simulate it there as well. When you flip the switch on, you get a red LED, and the motor turns, and then it goes to green LED, and the motor stops, which launches the propeller. The design is working, so now I need to build it. I found the tiny AVR programmer from SparkFun on Amazon for $26 with free prime shipping. It's about the same total price if you bought it direct from SparkFun. And I also bought some Atmel Tiny85 microcontrollers with it. In my collection of snap circuits, I have these 8-pin modules. They're great for like 555 timers or any 8-pin integrated circuit. Now, I want to make this reusable, so I wanted a label that I could snap on or snap off, and I thought a two-color 3D print would be perfect. Because this is small, I decided to use my A1 Mini with the AMS multicolor system. As usual, I went to Tinkercad to make my design. I made a square the size I wanted, and then I put a square hole in the center of it so it'll pop over the 8-pin socket. Then I made the labels with the text tool in each corner at each pin, and I made them large so they're easy to read and plus should be easier to print. Then I made a copy of those, slid it to the side, and made it into a hole to take away material on the big block. So I slid that over on top of the square label block, and also grouped it all, including the center hole. So I ma basically made my label with recessed lettering. But now I can take the other lettering that is solid, combine it with this block, and make my two-color label. I'll just print the letters in one color and a block in another. I exported them as separate STL files because I want to do some work on the lettering first. The first step was to bring the labels STL into Bamboo Slicer. I wanted to slice this first to see how the letters would look. And when I sliced it with just standard settings, they didn't look very good. It's missing a lot of pieces of the letters. So then I went detect thin walls in the settings and tried again. And this was much better, but still not quite there. There were spots where it was missing, especially on the first layer here. You can see missing spots in some letters like the P, and the N in ground was missing its points and also a little spot on the D. So I wanted to see if I could improve it further. I tried reducing wall loops from two to one, but that really didn't do a whole lot. I reset the thin wall and the wall loops back to their original settings. Then I went to the extrusion width settings under quality. I made the initial layer 0.25 instead of 0.5, the outer wall 0.25 instead of 0.42, and the inner wall 0.25 instead of 0.45, and I sliced that. The N in ground was perfect. Other letters didn't have their gaps anymore. The M and the W looked perfect, so I was happy with this. The letters were already centered, so I brought the block in and centered that on the bed, and the two were lined up perfectly because I flip it over, and you can't see the letters. They're lined up so perfectly. Then I went to the objects menu, and you can see there's two different prints. Well, I made the labels or the letters white and I made the plate red. I kept it at the red. So that's the two colors. Now, when you flip it over, you can see the letters and they line up perfectly. There's no gap. So this is looking really good. So now I need to slice it and see how it turns out. I sliced everything on the bed and then I scrolled down to the first layer and this is looking really good. This is the actual print and the letters look excellent amongst the red surrounding. 3D print. And as I scroll up, it continues to look good. So this is ready to send to the printer and see how it actually comes out with filament. So like I said, I'm printing this on the A1 Mini with the AMS system. And it laid down the first layer and I was pausing to change color. The lettering looks really good. And then it came back with the red and started to fill in amongst the letters and then between the letters. And I could tell just the way this was laying down 
This was a good print. This was a good first layer. And when it was done, it had some waste material. But overall, this thing came out pretty good. And the question was, would it fit the integrated circuit socket? And this thing popped right over and held tight. So this is going to work perfectly. So I reproduced the Tinkercad circuit in snap circuits, and here it is. But then I needed to program the microcontroller. So I copied the code from Tinkercad into Arduino, and then I selected the AT2585. The processor was the 85. One megahertz is the setting you have to use. I found the port where the programmer is plugged in, and then I said use the programmer USB Tiny ISP. And then when I click to compile the code and send it to the Arduino, in this case to the chip, it compiles it, and then it actually sends the hex file, the code, to the little programmer, and you can see the LED flash when it starts programming. And once that's done, now the code is inside the chip. From there, I just plug that chip into the snap circuit socket, and let's test it out and see if it works. So I flip on the switch, the red LED comes on, then the green, and the propeller launches. So that was a lot of fun, and now I have an easy way to program little 8-pin microcontrollers and build it in snap circuits. I'll put links to everything in the description below. Special shout out to all my Patreon supporters and my Thanks members. Without you guys, this channel couldn't happen. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thanks.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollabuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.